God, please believe me. I can't see anything. I can't see anything. It's dark. Okay. Delia, just lie back and let me check it out. Come on. Help me. Help me make this stop. Delia, stop crying. Blind. Blind. Damn, I've got a flashlight. Delia, tell me what you're seeing. Is everything blurry? Nothing. All right, do you, uh, do you see? Shadows. What's, what's it like? Tell me. It's like my eyes were closed. Any, anything now? Any, any lights? Or shadows? No. No. <laughs> Delia, I've got to get some instruments. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's because I took that slip. Maybe that's why this happened. I can't tell until I examine your eyes. Maybe I, I ran out of the bed too fast. That's what it is. I did something to the concussion. And maybe if I just I just stay still, it'll go away, won't it? All right, now just let go of my hand. I'll be right back. I, I'm going to go to the door and call a nurse. Now, you won't be alone. Don't get Pat. I won't tell Pat about the miscarriage until we see what's going on with your eyes. Morris? Get an ophthalmoscope and tell Dr. Moultrie to get in here right away. Yes, Doctor. Roger, is the light on? Am I looking at the light? Yes. <laughs> she can't see a thing. It's right out of the blue. Is this for real? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> hey. Hey, Delia. Delia. Sit up. Let me have a look at you. Clem, yeah. is that you? No one else. Come on. My eyes. They'll go away, won't it? In an hour or so. you'd be home. I came home from work early. Come on in. Thank you. Uh, I called Miriam. I know. She told me. I didn't think you'd mind, Jill. If... Of course not. Frank Edmonds, your son, and you can come here and visit with him whenever you want. Mm. Is he in there? Yeah, he's, he's with Miriam. I'll uh, go get him for you. Dog. Hey, this is, uh, this is Frank. Uh, hello. <laughs> you, um, you did see him at R Ryan's not too long ago. Yeah, well, we were never formally introduced. Hey. Hey, how's it going there? <laughs> <laughs> Miriam says that he discovered the uh, bookshelves today. Oh, all those things to mess up, huh? Yeah, and chew on, right? <laughs> Ah, uh, he's, he's just getting bigger every day. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, God help us, but I think what? he looks like my father. <laughs> really? Well, I, I certainly hadn't seen that. But then, of course, hey, what's wrong? I didn't know that, I didn't know Johnny was his grandfather. Well, how is he with strangers? 
Well, I never really know. Hey, you want to try and uh, hold him? Okay. All right. Edmund, say hello to Frank. <laughs> oh, it's getting oh. heavy. <laughs> now look, Edmund. Oh, yeah, I'll understand if you don't like this. But, uh, <laughs> really, I will. <laughs> Just say so. I'll understand. <laughs> um, dog sometimes uh, helps. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How is that? How is that dog and mommy? Huh? And friend? Tutu. Jill, you... You will tell him that I'm his father, won't you? Yeah, I... I think I have to. I think so, too. Well, I... I really can't say that, uh... that I feel like your dad. <laughs> but... Well, then again... Well, I... Well, not like I do with little John. <laughs> but uh, I guess that's not surprising, is it? <laughs> no. I think you're a pretty neat fella. You're climbing all over. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, you don't mind that he's not a girl. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why I said that. I guess I was just starting to remember. Well, that's okay. I remember, too. <laughs> What was that name we finally decided on? Uh, Mara? That... <laughs> I don't know, but I certainly know it wasn't Edmund. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you named him after your father. If I had been involved at that time, uh, I would have picked Edmund, too. If you'd been involved? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard thinking about what we could have avoided if we'd both known the truth. Yeah. I keep wondering what, what it would be like now. Yeah. Does that thought cross your mind very often? Of course it does. How can I help wondering about it? I don't know. Last night you gave me the impression that, uh, well, that the past was past, and all you really wanted was to tell me about Edmund. Thanks. I want to hear what else you have to say, so don't forget. I'll tell you what, you're with the wall. Oh, he's climbing all over you. I've been waiting to hear from you all day. Have you talked to Frank yet? So, tell me all about the great apartment hunt. <laughs> it was amazing. I never knew there were so many beautiful places here in Riverside penthouses where you can see across the river and no street noise you poor thing did they haul you around to 40 buildings oh no only eight and i loved it well it was very thoughtless of me to send you chasing around riverside without any help now the next time i'm going to have one of the secretaries get some leads for you first oh no it was wonderful i felt i'd done it all on my own next time yeah i mean you didn't get me apartment on the first try did you no it was the fourth building <laughs> I think it is perfect for you, if you don't mind a few extra rooms. Oh, I can live with that. Huh? And it is only four blocks away from Frank Ryan's office. Alicia, you are incredible. <laughs> well, I, I told the broker you'd have to see it first. I'm going to be mad for it. <sighs> uh, the only thing is, I hope I won't have to turn it down. <laughs> why should you have to? Mr. Ryan's plans are a little bit up in the air, that's why. Well, he's still planning to run for Congress, isn't he? I'm not sure. Well, what happened? I'm sorry, I shouldn't ask. No, no, you let me ask you a question, Alicia. Now, you have two candidates for the United States Senate. One is a talented young bachelor divorced with one child that he's very close to. The other has exactly the same background, plus an illegitimate child, 10 months old, being raised by its unmarried mother. Now, which man gets your vote? I don't know. I uh, I suppose the one who knows more about New York. In that respect, they're equally qualified. Well, then... The one who is more settled. The one without the illegitimate baby. Mm-hmm. And most people would feel the same way, I'm afraid. But that man is Frank Ryan, isn't it? He's both. Alicia, Frank Ryan has just found out that he is the father of Jillian Coleridge's baby. <sighs> but Dr. Bolak... No. Dr. Bolak ran some blood tests, and unfortunately for all of us, he lost. <sighs> yes, ma'am. Frank and Miss Coleridge have been lovers for some years now, haven't they? Yes, from what Bob has told me. But if they still care for each other, and if there is a child involved, then they will certainly get married, and then there will be no scandal, and they can go on with the campaign. 
Yes, well, on the surface, that does seem like the best solution, but uh, I'm not so sure it'll work out. They were both free? They were both free when that baby was conceived, Alicia. They've had ample opportunity to marry. They don't. Somehow, something has always stopped them. Well, it's my private feeling that they probably wanted to be stopped. Maybe then before the child, but now. Frank Ryan would want to make a good home for him. Frank Ryan cares a great deal about family life. Miss Coleridge is a very strong, independent lady. She seems to feel that she can cope with giving Edmund a home without Frank's assistance. He really doesn't believe that. I'm not so sure what he believes, Alicia. He's going to consider all the alternatives, at least that's what we agreed, and I left it at that. What alternatives are there? He can either marry Miss Coleridge or he can face the gossip that an illegitimate baby would bring him. And from what Bob has told me, the last thing Frank Ryan would do would be to hide the truth. I mean, he would refuse to run before he did that. Uh -uh. No. No, there are always ways to handle situations like this, Alicia. You don't see them immediately, but there are ways. No, I don't. But then I know nothing about politics. Frank must be made to see that there are compromise approaches he can take. What? It has just occurred to me, Alicia. Frank really must understand that he does have alternatives. Thank you. Six Degrees of YNR, The Young Millennials. It's yours. Kid Kidrich, an American girl. basic tests. I just try to relax. <sighs> Pupillary response is absolutely normal. I saw the retinas, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know what's wrong with me? Why don't you tell me? Please tell me. Mrs. Ryan, why don't you just concentrate on keeping your eyes open? What difference does it make if they're open and they're closed? I can't see anything. Is a normal also. No, uh, no sign of hemorrhaging. No. Delia, I want you to sit up as straight as you can. Come on. Now, I want you to put your right hand in f over your right eye and tell me if you see my finger at any point. Oh, oh, come, come on, come on. Give it a good try. Anything? No. <laughs> no. All right. Delia, let's... Let's try it one more time. Just, just twice more. Twice more what? what? What is this supposed to be? What am I supposed to be seeing? I don't see anything, you know? I'm blind. I can't see. Yeah. That's it for the confrontation test. Look, uh, I didn't see any vision at all. I guess we better get her down to ophthalmology. Yeah, yeah, maybe they can find something. But you think it's hysterical? Those eyes should be working for her. Yeah, maybe they are. Shall I get a sedative? <laughs> Can't see. Stop being hysteric. Uh, Stop yelling, Delia. I am not ordering any sedation. Unless you can't calm yourself down on your own. Okay, I'll calm down. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I was crying because I'm scared. I know. Delia. Right before you realized you couldn't see, did anything upsetting happen? 
If you've had an emotional shock, we should know. It might help the diagnosis. Oh, I'm fine. Huh? I was fine. Okay. Okay, okay. You take it easy and we'll be back in again soon. Come on. Roger. Roger, uh, would you stay here for a minute, please? I'll do the test. I'll do it right. Okay, good. Please don't say anything to Patty about the miscarriage. Because if you tell him, he'll leave me. I know it. I mean that. Dita, if I don't tell Pat about the miscarriage yet, will you try to recover from this uh, terrifying Why blindness? don't you believe me? Would you just believe? What is this? What, what is this? It's, uh, it's just another test, that's all. Roger, 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 would you please believe me? God is punishing me, and he's making me blind because I've done a lot of awful things. But don't, don't do that to me, okay? Please. Please, I'm alone, and I'm scared, and it's dark. Don't, don't take Patty away from me, please. Just relax, Dee. I won't tell Pat. Help me. Please help me. had left them. Seneca, I'd like you to leave. I'm intruding. Sorry? I'm afraid that doesn't ring very true. It might be just as well if he stayed. Why? Because you've told him how you feel. I haven't. Do you really have to do that now? Would it bother you very much? Well, obviously. It's got to be hard on both of them. Edwin's aware of what's going on around him. I can see that. Even though I haven't been allowed to know him very long. Uh, Seneca. Please, don't start anything. Don't start talking for me. Uh, I know this discussion has to take place, and it might as well happen right now. And I'll take Edmund into Miriam. Come on, baby. So every foul thought I've ever had about you turns out to be true. I'm not going to defend myself to you. I love Jill and Edmund. I did what I felt was best for both of them. In your godlike wisdom. No. No, for my vantage as a friend who saw Jill go through too much hell because of you. You can say that after lying to her for nine months? Yes. That's nearly a year of keeping her under your thumb while you played the innocent friend. And you've got the nerve to stand there and tell me what I've put her through. Never in my life have I lied to Jill. You used her. You walked away from her after years of promises. Now, maybe that's what a politician calls honest, but I don't. And what do you call taking away my son? That child is the most important person in the he world. He is my son. You are responsible for his existence. Beyond that, I fathered him every step of the way. You chiseled your way into his life. You chiseled your way. You claimed my rights to my son, and it's an outrage I've just barely started to feel. And when it finally sinks in, you had better be far away from me. You know, when you thought he was mine, you gave up on him completely, but I, I knew he was yours, and I loved him. You see, the fact is that you really don't want another child. You never see the one you already have. Don't mention another word about my relationship with my little boy. And don't tell me about loving, because you don't understand what the word means. You control and possess and you destroy. And you can't even regret it. What I regret is the years that Jill has wasted on you. The plans that you let her make. I know it makes you very happy to blame me for it, but the fact is we both know you're responsible for destroying those plans. The hell I was. I was ready to marry her and share Edmund with you for your rights as a father. But you demanded so many rights, you made compromise impossible. You're the reason why we're not married. Everything went haywire because of you. All right. 
It's enough, okay? Now, what's that supposed to mean? That you're automatically together now because I'm out of the picture? All right, Frank, are you or are you not going to marry Jill? Let's have it. All right. I hope I can see Edmund again. Of course you can. Will you at least tell me how things stand between you? No. When you feel like talking, you know where to find me. Breakfast in bed with SoapNet. Sleep in, curl up, and check out with back-to-back -back episodes of One Tree Hill and Beverly Hills 90210. Breakfast in bed, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. every Saturday and Sunday on SoapNet.